So, hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, PhotographyP.com. In today's video, I wanna cover the RAW versus JPEG debate. We'll cover what each file format is, along with the advantages and disadvantages of both. I'll also discuss some of the practical use cases for one format over the other. So, by the end of the video, you'll have some valuable insight about each of these file types and which one is best for your workflow. Note, you can find timestamps in the description down below. You can also scrub through the video to stick to a more relevant section if you'd like. But with that said, let's get started. Let's first start with what is a raw image. A raw file is your camera's native file format that contains all of its unprocessed data directly from its imaging sensor. Contrary to what some think though, a raw file isn't a visual file format. Instead, it's a file that contains the data representing the analog to digital conversion process of light to a voltage. So really a raw file stores data about how much light in either the red, blue, or green color spectrums happened over the course of an exposure not an image. Because of this, a raw file isn't something we can view directly since it's merely binary data. Thus, it requires conversion to an actual visual file format like the JPEG format, which is why this format ultimately requires photographers to use post-processing software or a raw converter to view, edit, and share this file. So if a raw image is essentially binary numbers or readings from a camera, what exactly is a JPEG? Well, it's a complicated process, but one worth noting. When you set your camera's image quality settings to capture JPEGs, the camera takes the raw data from the time of exposure and immediately moves that image through its processor. The processor first starts by guessing the light intensity across all of the pixels on the sensor, effectively reducing the incoming data to a third, and that in turn directly causes a loss of tonal and color data since it throws away the other two thirds. Next, it applies the predefined saturation, contrast, and sharpening values that you set in your image quality settings in camera. Here, it also specifies both the working color space and white balance settings or values that you set. Lastly, it applies a certain level of lossy compression set in the image quality settings, ranging from high to low compression, and then it saves the file to the memory card or a running buffer. And now you'll see a fully developed image on your rear LCD or in your camera's viewfinder. This in-camera processing workflow is ultimately what sets RAW and JPEG images apart. And while this workflow has its advantages as we'll cover, the image is fully developed at the moment you take the shot and that has its downsides. But quick commercial break. Did you know Photography PX launched a sister company called pxpresets.com? Well, if you didn't, pxpresets.com is going to be your next one-stop shop for Adobe Lightroom desktop and mobile presets. On PX presets, you can find a large selection of presets to shortcut the process of getting high quality images and consistent branding across your imagery. We have a large selection of styles that are well suited for food, products, portraiture, fashion, beauty, and much more. We're also running a special right now for our mega collection. So if you want to upgrade your entire workflow in one fell swoop, now's a great opportunity. So if you're in the market for some high quality Lightroom presets to shortcut your workflow, feel free to check out pxpresets.com. With that said, back to the video. With that said, what are the benefits of RAW? With the uncompressed and unprocessed nature of RAW files come several benefits, but they all combine to give you, the photographer, more creative flexibility. Let's cover each of the benefits right now. The first benefit is white balance. You have complete freedom to adjust the white balance with a RAW file. The camera captures all of the exposure values in the essential spectrums, which are red, green, and blue. And you can change the appearance or temperature of the image freely since these settings are not baked into the file directly. Second, color space. Like white balance, the color space, like sRGB or Adobe RGB, isn't saved directly into the file either, so you can change the working color space later if needed. Third, the color depth. You'll capture the full color gamut that your camera is capable of. This means you'll likely capture images in either 14-bit or 12-bit, and this is quite a substantial difference in color accuracy, tonal quality, and how the fine color gradations in your photos appear over JPEG's 8-bit gamut. 
Fourth, dynamic range. Dynamic range refers to the exposure value latitude between the darkest shadows and the brightest highlights in a photo. RAW files record upwards of 16,384 levels of brightness rather than just 256 like JPEG. So even if those areas in your photo appear clipped at first, you can usually recover those areas to reveal the tones and details underneath them. And thus you get better highlight and shadow recovery with RAW files. Number five, noise reduction and sharpening. You get an uncompressed file that's entirely entirely free of any in-camera noise reduction or sharpening, and that gives you the freedom to use a more complex sharpening technique or algorithm on the photo later on. Number six, no compression. RAW files are uncompressed by default unless you set the camera to record a lossless compressed RAW, but in both cases, you can still avoid any image compression artifacts that plate JPEG. Those artifacts include side effects such as loss of sharpness, contrast, color, detail, and pixelation or blockiness. Number seven, non-destructive workflow. With RAW, you start a genuinely non-destructive workflow, which is arguably its greatest benefit. When you edit using a RAW converter, like Adobe Lightroom or Capture One, all the changes act as adjustment layers. So what you're really editing is a reference file. And these changes then become a set of instructions to apply when you output that file to JPEG, PNG, or TIFF. Then and only then do the changes become permanent. But the RAW file itself is always left untouched and in this regard, you have a truly non-destructive workflow that always lets you go back and start over. With that said, there are some unique downsides and cons when shooting RAW, so let's cover those right now. First and foremost, with RAW, it always requires post-processing. There's no escaping that. Even something as simple as converting it to a more web-friendly format like JPEG or PNG requires involvement in often specialized software, and this fact alone adds considerable time to your photography workflow. Next, file storage. Capturing all of the data from each of your sensor's pixels requires space and it ends up creating substantially larger files in the process. A larger file size means that each image takes up more memory on your SD card and more storage space on your computer or hard drive. In fact, raw files average 20 to 30 megabytes, making them roughly four times larger than your average JPEG file, which averages about five to 10 megabytes. Next, file sharing and compatibility. Camera manufacturers haven't standardized raw files, nor are they designed designed to work across multiple manufacturers. Instead, each file is proprietary to both the camera make and model, and that inevitably means that not all image editors can open all available RAW files. And this general lacking compatibility makes the RAW file format challenging to work with, as it always requires specialized software. But that said, now that we've discussed the pros and cons of shooting RAW, let's cover the same for JPEG. With JPEG, it doesn't require post-processing. JPEG images are naturally processed in camera by the RAW to JPEG conversion. So most of the changes you naturally make in editing, like adding contrast and saturation and sharpening are baked into the file from the beginning. Of course, you can always add more processing later on if you'd like, but there's no real requirement to actually do that. Next, file storage. Since JPEG files are compressed and lack much of the core information RAW offers, they're much smaller, and that means they use Use less storage space on your SD card, computer, and hard drive. So you get faster backups, easier file management, and faster continuous shooting speeds since the camera has less data to process in the buffer. Next, file sharing and compatibility. Unlike RAW, JPEG is the standard file format across most modern display devices. So it's highly compatible, easy to view, and doesn't require specialized software. And given their efficient compression and smaller file size, it's also easy to share online to a website or social media platform. With that said though, there are some unique downsides or cons to shooting JPEG. So let's cover those right now. First, lossy compression. JPEG files have lossy compression applied during the conversion process. This type of compression results in a smaller file size, which is great, but it also causes compression artifacts or a loss of detail, contrast, color, or posterization artifacts. How noticeable these effects are going to vary based on the quality setting of compression you use on your camera, but even JPEG fine, which is the highest quality setting, causes some loss of detail, especially if you're shooting a subject up close Close, say during macro photography. Next, the white balance. Since JPEG files throw away two thirds of the color data during the conversion process, the white balance preset permanently gets baked into the file. And while you can change this slightly after the fact, you don't have complete freedom to do so once the setting is set. 
Next, color space. Like white balance, the color space, like sRGB or Adobe RGB, is also saved directly into the file, but sadly, this isn't something you can change directly after the fact. Next, color depth. The JPEG format is limited to 8-bit color, producing only 16.8 million possible colors. The camera then discards all of the other color data during the conversion process. So by shooting JPEG, you're effectively limiting the color your camera can capture to a third of its true capabilities. Next, dynamic range. Since the conversion also throws away two-thirds of the light intensity values, this format also contains less dynamic range and limits the detail you can recover in the shadows and highlights. And in general, General overexposing or underexposing an image by more than one stop results in a complete loss of detail. Next, it's destructive. Merely converting a RAW file to JPEG in camera makes the process destructive, as the camera interpolates the data and throws away any extraneous information permanently. So from the beginning, you lose valuable data from what your sensor captured during the time of exposure. Plus, any additional adjustments or changes to a JPEG image in the editing stage also results in generation loss of image quality. It's also important to highlight that the camera settings used during the capture process directly impact JPEG images. So applying too much in-camera sharpening, noise reduction, or contrast can destroy the photo from the beginning, and there's no way to undo those effects after the fact. So to conclude, should you use RAW or JPEG? This question really depends on you and your shooting style. And while RAW is the superior format given the added image quality and general flexibility, that doesn't necessarily mean you should always use it. So I'll list some of the main reasons we suggest shooting one format over the other. When should you shoot JPEG? One, if you want a fast turnaround speed or ease of use. If you hate the idea of post-processing your photos to a final image, or you need a quick turnaround time for your shoot, say posting your highlights from your travel, or working on a tight deadline, shooting JPEG is best. Two, if you have limited storage. If you forgot to reformat your SD card or clear off old photos and now have limited storage space on your computer or your camera, shooting JPEG is best to conserve the remaining space you do have. Three, if you're a sports, wildlife, or photojournalism photographer. Not only do you need photos for a quick turnaround time in these mediums, but you'll also want to maximize your camera's continuous shooting performance. Some agencies may also require JPEG images to prevent any photo manipulation, and in that case, shooting JPEG is a must. Number four, personal use. If you're shooting a casual birthday party, a Thanksgiving dinner, or a selfie, it's unlikely the added dynamic range and tonal information will make a difference. So for casual personal photography, shooting JPEG will make your workflow simple. And five, if you're a beginner, if you're new to photography, save the time learning about post-processing. Instead, focus on mastering your camera and going out and practicing. Shooting JPEG will only make the process easier and reduce some of the challenges in the beginning. You can always learn about editing when you're ready. That said, when should you shoot RAW? First, high quality printing. If you plan on printing your images and you want the most detail and color fidelity available on your camera, shooting RAW is best. Two, if you want maximum creative flexibility. Shooting RAW is best to edit your images with the maximum creative freedom to make them unique and stylized. It's also best if you have the intention of editing images years later, since you'll maintain the original data captured during exposure. Three, professional use. If you're shooting professionally for a client or your portfolio, then shooting RAW is best so you can maximize your camera's image quality. Four, dynamic range, HDR, and tonal detail. If you're shooting in high contrast environments like landscapes or backlighting, shooting RAW will help ensure you capture the best images possible. It's also a must if you plan on creating an HDR merge. But for us personally, we shoot mostly JPEG plus RAW, and we adjust the in-camera settings like contrast, film simulation, color, tone, grain, to create unique JPEG images that are difficult to replicate in post-processing alone. But we always prefer having the original RAW files too, so we can go back later and re-edit them as we grow. Thankfully, storage these days is cheap, and there are many excellent image culling and cataloging applications, so it's not the end of the world to catalog both RAW and JPEG files these days. And the mere flexibility you get with RAW files when you need it far outweighs their downsides. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the content of it valuable, insightful, and you learned something meaningful here. If you're new to our channel, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. If you have any comments, questions, or feel like I've overlooked something in the course of the video, please let me know down below. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, Photography P. Dot com.